everyone. I'm Margaret McSweeney. Welcome to the Viking and La Cornu showroom here at the Merchandise Mart. I'm with one of my favorite friends. Chef the favorite friend. <laughs> the Your favorite best friend. favorite friend. Yes. <laughs> Chef Jamie Lorita, what are we cooking today? Well, I am so excited to cook this recipe because a lot of my Instagram followers social media peeps have been asking me for this recipe for years. This is a basic Italian meatball recipe. Um, again, with all of my recipes, there's always a secret fun ingredient. And today's secret ingredient is mascarpone. And Margaret, what have you learned about mascarpone? I am so excited about mascarpone. Mascarpone. <laughs> It originated, of course, in Italy, uh, southwest of Milan, I believe, and I never realized it's a key ingredient of tiramisu. That's right. It sure is. So the secret ingredient in my meatball recipe today is mascarpone. I don't know anybody else that uses it. Italian meatballs are the staple of your Italian Sunday dinner. Um, lots of people do them differently. Uh, people add pine nuts, raisins, olives, all kinds of things to their meatballs to make them their own. I'm going to give it to you the basic way today. So we're going to start with three kinds of meat, Margaret. Okay. I use veal, pork, and beef, about a pound each um, of each ground meat. You can get ground uh, veal, pork, and beef at most of your uh, high-end grocery stores these days. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have them together in a package, knowing that they have a lot of Italians out there looking to make meatballs and things <laughs> like this. Great, and are you gonna make it spicy? I mean, what That's is... That's the great thing about okay. the recipe. You know, you can go in a lot of different directions with mm -hmm. meatballs, depending on your taste. For me, I'm just gonna make them my old school way. So what I usually start out with is the ground beef, and then I add in three to four eggs. It's usually one egg per pound of meat. Um, I had small eggs today, so I added another one. Mm -hmm. Usually you want to find larger eggs, and if you find smaller eggs, you can add just one. The reason for the egg is to bind all the ingredients together and to keep it moist. To that, I also add some breadcrumbs. My breadcrumbs are Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, and it's about a cup and a half to two cups. To that, I also add about two cups of chopped onion. You want to chop the onion fine. I've added some Parmigiano cheese. It's Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And I always tend to uh, use that uh, brand. It's a great um, it's a great cheese and it's got a lot of sharpness to it. I'm also adding some fresh chopped parsley. These days you can go to the supermarket and buy garlic like in the two ingredients. Here's where I add my mascarpone cheese. Mascarpone, when the meatballs are fried, it's going to be obviously part of the mixture, but it's going to lend a lot of uh, creamy richness to the meatball. They're going to stay moist. I like to stew my meatballs in my tomato sauce. And today, which is really exciting from Viking, I'm going to be using my incognito, Margaret. Yes. The incognito is something so cool and new from Viking. It gives you the ability to cook food like sous vide cooking, poaching, uh, keeping your food hot like a chafing dish through your countertop. So the system is actually mounted underneath your countertop and you can set four different types of temperature settings. And right here, as you can see, my pot is hot, but my countertop is not. So I have my tomato sauce cooking all day um, from the beginning of my morning, I'm, I've been making this tomato sauce right through my countertop, away from my range top where I need the other burners. Isn't that exciting stuff? It, it is so exciting. It's like adding an additional burner. It is. For entertainment purposes, because you're no longer needing to put a chafing dish on your countertop when you're serving food. Let's imagine that this was a chili, mm -hmm. um, and you can have your 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 sides or your cheeses and sour cream and everything that you would serve with the chili around it. And then you would go upstairs and put on a pretty dress because you're done cooking and your guests come over and that chili will remain hot all throughout the evening. So you never have to worry about late guests coming and having to reheat something. It's a wonderful new product from Viking and I think it's just amazing. New cool stuff. I add a little bit of um, salt and pepper to the mix. And you can see I have chili flake also in that mixture. And then I begin to mix with my hands. Now, a lot of people would be saying right now at this point, oh, you should be wearing rubber gloves or, you know, plastic gloves. Sure, I should be in, in a restaurant environment, but this is my home and my grandmother never wore rubber gloves. 
And I love to, Jamie, how one of your biggest lessons to me has, is to be comfortable in your kitchen yeah. and your comfort food. I love your unique approach to making you feel comfortable making comfort food. Yeah, well, I think like Viking, you know, Viking to me has always been um, the brand that I love to use in my home. And I cook from the heart and from the heart of the home. And you know, I can cook all the fancy stuff. You know, I'm a, uh, I'm a trained chef. I've gone to the Culinary Institute of America, and I know how to make all the fancy things, but I'm a comfort food chef at heart. Like, I love, I love everything that makes you feel good. So comfort food, comfort mood, comfort music. I'm all about the things that make you feel good. So, Margaret, would you do me a favor? Yes. So in this mix right now, um, I've incorporated all my ingredients, but I want a little bit more moisture. So it's okay if you want to grab that little cup of water right there to adjust the, um, pour about half of it in <laughs> or all of it. Just pour all of it in, Margaret. She's so smooth. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You make me feel comfortable in the kitchen. That, you're really comfortable. You're really comfortable. Actually, it was the right amount because, oh, because what I want is I want all the ingredients to pull off the sides of the bowl. That tells me that my recipe is, is perfect as far as moisture is concerned. And I always use, I always use the, a little bit of water in the end to get the um, to get the ingredients to pull off the side of the bowl. Now, what you want to do is you don't want to over mix it. You want to make sure that it's just mixed enough for all the ingredients to be, you know, properly together. And then basically, what happens is you grab a little bunch of meat right there, and you start to form your meatballs. And it, they're fun to make because it's one of those things that just bring you back to your childhood. Oh taste memories and I love too that you're actually writing down all of these great and recipes and we're going to be sharing it on the Viking Facebook page along yes. with the video yes and I encourage you guys to like change it up you know these recipes are meant to be um, shared number one but they're also meant to be manipulated to make them your own um, I also use this exact recipe for stuffed mushrooms so you can get stuffed mushroom caps, even portobello ones that are bigger. Um, take the same exact recipe, add in things like pine nuts or cranberries for the holidays, and stuff your mushrooms with the exact same thing. And I always make one little guy. <laughs> he's mine, he's my friend. I always make one little guy, and he's the first one that goes into the pan, and that's my tester meatball, but he's my favorite because I get to eat him. So I'm gonna be frying them. Okay. So I have uh, some vegetable oil, and I put enough oil that it's enough to cover three quarters of the meatball. So you wanna see that little top of the mountain sticking out of the oil just like that, that's okay. So you wanna get it to a heat where you're getting that really nice um, sort of like bubbling around the sides. And the, the fun thing about making meatballs is, is that, you know, you don't really have to worry too much mm -hmm. about them getting overdone. I tend to want to brown them in the oil okay. and then they finish cooking in the tomato sauce. So I'm going to poach them and stew them in the tomato sauce. So now, just a quick question, because so many different countries have their version of meatballs. So how does like a Swedish meatball differ from an Italian meatball? Well, mostly it's the person cooking them, <laughs> right? I'm an Italian making Italian meatballs. If I was Swedish, I'd be making them smaller. Yes. Um, some of them are sweeter. Um, the recipe changes a little bit, um, but it's more or less... You know, it's more or less the same, the same ingredients. Okay. You know, you get ground beef and ground meats. Um, also, if you don't like veal or if you don't like pork, you can also make this recipe without the three meats. Mm -hmm. If you want to use beef, you can do that. You can use turkey. You can use any meat you want. Um, this recipe gives you a lot of flavor. There's a lot of richness in veal and a lot of uh, fat in pork. So it gives it a little bit more of a... Um, juicier mm -hmm. bite, but you don't need to use all three meats. So as these cook, you want to make sure that you see this browning, Margaret? Yes, beautiful. He's real cute, my little guy. <laughs> so on the other side, as you um, can see, the other side 
isn't cooked. So you just turn them over and what you want to do, you see the pink tops? That's turning it over too soon. I just did that on purpose, but you want to get them brown, really brown and seal them just like you would a steak. Mm -hmm. um, you want to seal them on both sides and then you want to stew them in your tomatoes in your tomato sauce. Um, as you stew them, they're going to get more moist and they're going to get more tender to the fork. So um, they can be eaten, you know, either way with, without being stewed, like I told you before. But most Italians will eat half of them, or at least in my family, half of them will be eaten before they even make it to the pot. I know in my house, very few make it to the tomato sauce. I just love them that way. And you'll taste them browned. Um, they're just fantastic. These are huge. Okay, I don't do anything small. Now, if I wanted to change the size of them, guys, it's gonna yield a lot more meatballs with the recipe we showed you. So here today, we've got about 12, but they're huge. I like a big meatball. You know, I like to have my pasta and like one giant meatball on the plate, um, but you don't have to make them this big. The great thing about this Viking range too, um, when we're talking about how to cook the meatballs, nobody does a temperature like Viking. Mm -hmm. They do the best simmer. I've never seen a simmer like on, like on any range that I've ever cooked on in my life more like Viking. Viking does simmer really, really well. So you want to have your, I'm actually simmering um, on low right now and that's what you want. Now if you wanted to go and you didn't have time, you can actually crank it up a little bit to brown them faster, but I like them to slow cook because I have the time. And don't be afraid, especially on a Viking range, don't be afraid to crank up the heat to get them done faster if you don't have time. Does that make sense it to you? It makes sense, and it is just, it's such a soft simmer. It really is. It's a, uh, you know, there are times when I'm on, um, cooking on the Viking, this is my Viking 5 series, that I don't even realize it, my food is cooking, but you can't see the flame. It's like a whisper of heat. And you know, good chefs like a good simmer. And for me, um, like I said, Viking does it the best. So, so here we go, Margaret. This is what a proper cooked meatball looks like. Beautiful. It's a little meatball. <laughs> it's a, my friend. And this might be a little bit pink in the middle, and that's okay, because I want to show you what it looks like when it goes into the pot. And you see that little bit of pinkness in the middle? Yes. You want that before it goes into the sauce, because you want it to continue cooking in the pot. Now, for me, I eat the little brown parts in the side. Um, oh my goodness. Grandma. <laughs> Grandma Mayano is right here with me. Mm. Try that. This is safe to eat. <laughs> Mama Mia. Mama Mia. <laughs> now, do you taste the moistness of that? This is the best meatball I have ever had. Of course it is. Of course. Of course it is. <laughs> but um, I love how that mascarpone gives you that really soft, tender mouthfeel. And as it stews in the sauce, it's going to get more and more um, tender. And that's what good stewing is. So basically now, with my meatball. It has a very smooth but crunchy texture. Yeah, that's the outside. You want to get the outside really crispy. Mm -hmm. Here's the perfect look right here. So guys, browned like that all the way around, right? And then you put your meatballs on a little bit of paper to drain off some of the fat, and then they go right into your stew pot. And how long will these stew for? You know, typically, typically these are on the stove. You know, say my grandmother was doing it at nine in the morning. They'd be on the stove all day. Basically what you need is to have all of the juices incorporate and stew into the sauce, you're going to get that really beautiful veal, pork, and beef uh, flavor throughout the day cooking in your sauce. And these are amazingly perfect. These guys look really, really good. So basically all day long, you can stew these meatballs in your sauce on a very low simmer for several hours. 
I normally have my meatballs cooking for two to three hours. And they, because the outside has been uh, cooked and mm -hmm. it, they're crusty on the outside, they're not going to fall apart in your sauce. You've got the egg, you've got the breadcrumb and everything binding them together. So the longer you cook them, the more tender they're going to be. And that's a my meatball, kids. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, cheers to Chef Jamie's meatballs. And do you have a special name for this recipe? There's no name. It's just a my meatball. Maybe that's it. Just a my meatball. It's a simple thing, guys. And it's a, it's something that if you do it, you know, make it your own, like I said. It's something that you can do, um, you know, for your Sunday dinners or Wednesday dinners, whenever you want. But if you get it right and you put yourself into it, like I say, um, you know, add a little love to it, add a little fun to it, add a little memory to it, make them your own. Before you know it, you'll have people knocking on your door or calling you on Sunday mornings, hey, hey, what's up today? Like I get. And uh, they really know that I'm making meatballs, so that's all they really want. And uh, it's, something, it's something that can make you a star in your kitchen, and it's something that you could pass on. You know, how long have we been thinking about meatballs and spaghetti in life? Forever. So it's a good thing. It is a great thing. And thank you for making us feel comfortable in the kitchen, making comfort food. Yes, it's all about being comfortable in the kitchen with Viking. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. Nice seeing you. Enjoy those meatballs.